Do you ever feel like you're wrestling with your spreadsheets more than actually working with them? Spent countless hours tweaking VLOOKUP formulas only to get those dreaded NA errors? Well, what if I told you that there was a better way, a function that can save you time, reduce errors, and make your data work for you effortlessly? Say hello to XLOOKUP. In today's video, we'll explore why you should stop using VLOOKUP and start embracing XLOOKUP in Microsoft 365. We'll dive into how this powerful function works step by step, and by the end, you'll wonder how you ever managed without it. Get ready to transform the way that you handle data. Let's get started. First things first, what exactly is XLOOKUP? Well, XLOOKUP is a versatile and powerful function in Excel that allows you to search for a value in a range and return a corresponding value from another range. Think of it as VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP combined, but on steroids. So why is XLOOKUP better than VLOOKUP? Well, there's several reasons. First off, flexibility. Unlike VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP can search both vertically and horizontally. Then we've got bidirectional lookup. It can look uh, to the left, it can look to the right, it can look up and it can look down. VLOOKUP can only look to the right. Then there's exact match by default. No more worrying about adding true or false to the end of your formula. And it's a much simplified syntax, fewer arguments and more intuitive to use. And of course, we can't talk about XLOOKUP without talking about the error handling, the built-in options to handle any missing data gracefully. So let's take a look at that syntax. It's broken down into six parts. Three parts are mandatory and three parts are optional. The first part would be your lookup value, the value that you're actually searching for. The second part is lookup array, the range where you are actually looking for the lookup value. And then part three, the return array. Now this uh, is the range in which you want to return a value from. Then we get into the three optional parts. The uh, fourth part, which is if not found, which is optional, is what you could display if it cannot find a match to your search criteria. And then we've got part five, which is the match mode. How to match the lookup value. Do you want an exact match? Do you want an exact match or the lower number? Exact match and a higher number? Do you, do you want to use a wildcard? We'll talk more about this in a moment. And then of course we've got part six. How do you want to search your data? It's basically the order in which you want to search. Do you want to search from the top of the spreadsheet to the bottom of the spreadsheet? From the bottom to the top? Or maybe you want the formula to first of all sort the data in numerical order and then start actually searching in ascending or descending order from there. This makes it a very powerful function. Okay, so let's walk through a live example of XLOOKUP. Imagine that you have a list of employees with their IDs in column A and their departments in column B. And let's say that you want to find out which department employee ID 1024 belongs to. Okay, so to do that, we're going to select a cell. It doesn't really matter where. We're just gonna choose this one right here. And we're gonna go equals X look up. Now you could open up a parentheses or we can just double click on xlookup and it will open up the function for us. Now here you can see that we have several parts right starting at the lookup value. So what are we looking for? Well we're looking for employee 1024 so we're going to type that in but you could of course reference a cell if you wanted to. We'll go hit comma and this is going to open up the second part of the formula the lookup array. This is where you're going to find that employee ID. So in our case it's going to be in column A. So we're going to select the entire column A. Now you could select the specific range of A2 to A27 in this example, but I much prefer to just select the entire column. There are some examples where you might not want to do this, so you can of course uh, be very specific about where you want this formula to search. We'll hit comma and then we're going to get the return array. Now the return array in our case is the department. We want to return the department in which the employee is actually you know, a part of. So we're going to select column B. Okay, so with that said, we can now press enter and there we go. We have our Product management is the location in which this employee is um, 
is actually corresponding to. And you can see right here in our data that it's found the exact match of 1024 and brought back column B, the product management section. Now, what if we mistyped our ID or maybe the employee ID can't be found inside our data? How do we handle those errors? Well, we can come back into our formula by the formula bar or we can double click into our formula down here. And what we can do is we can go ahead and add a comma after our return array and just before the parentheses. If we do that, it's going to open up one of the optional uh, elements of our formula, which the next one in the list is if not found, which means that we can actually tell this formula to return something different if it cannot find a match to what it's looking for. So in our case, I'm going to open up some quotation marks and I'm going to say not found and I'm going to close those quotations. And when I press return, because this product is uh, or this ID is found, we're able to return where this um, return the data without a problem. However, if I were to mistype this, let's say I accidentally missed out the zero and it's actually one, two, four rather than one, zero, two, four. Well, if I press return on that, it's going to give me the not found equation uh, or answer to our to our equation here. This essentially means that you don't have to deal with all those NA errors. For example, if you have data that you're expecting not to find inside your data set, you could actually blank this out by just leaving the quotations in place and have no text in the middle. As such, it will come back as a completely blank row and handling all those nasty NA errors that you might have. Okay. So we've handled a XLOOKUP. We can use its very basic functions of looking for an ID and returning a department, and also how to handle errors inside the data. What if, though, we wanted to search for something that we didn't actually know the exact name or the exact uh, lookup value that we're looking for, but we have a rough idea of what that is? Well, we could use wildcards to help us with this. I'm going to go ahead and delete off our formula here. And we're going to start a new one. This time, I'm going to look for product management in our list, okay? And I'm going to try to bring back a product ID. So we're actually going to bring back a column that is to the left of our lookup array, okay? And we're going to only search for the word product using a wildcard. As product is the only thing listed here, it should only bring back one result. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go equals, we're going to go x lookup. We're going to open up a bracket here, okay, and we're going to find, uh, open up, or we're going to use the uh, quotations and we're going to type the word product and then we're going to put an asterisk at the end and then we're going to close those parentheses. Okay, so this means I'm searching for something that begins with product. We could also change this up a little bit and we could have the asterisks at the beginning, meaning that we understand or we have an idea of what the end of our sentence might be, but not the beginning part, in which case we could put the asterisks at the beginning rather than at the end. But in this case, I'm going to be looking for any department that begins with the name product and I'm going to bring back the employee ID. Okay, so product asterisks, we're going to close those parentheses so it's wrapped up in there nicely we're going to hit comma and we're going to find this in column b so that's the first thing we need to do okay we'll hit comma again and what we want to bring back as a value is the employee id so i'll select column a we'll hit comma again and if it can't find anything i want to bring back not found in quotations again okay so that's our error handling and if I hit comma again we open up the match mode okay this is where we get to choose whether we want an exact match an exact match or the next smallest item an exact match or the next largest item or whether we want to use a wildcard character and it is a wildcard that we want to use so I'm going to go ahead and select this by double clicking it and it's going to put the number two in our formula here we can now go ahead and close the parentheses and press return and it's going to bring back 1024 which is the ID for the department of product management now because product management is the only um, the only result in our list here it is the only one that begins with product I should say and therefore it's the only result that could possibly be found now sometimes you might have multiple uh, results in which case you're going to obviously have to try to figure out other ways of finding that data but for the most part this is a really useful function using wildcards within your XLOOKUP
up, specifically if you know someone's surname but not their first name, for example. This is really, really useful. Okay, so that would be how you would use a wildcard to kind of get at the data that you have in your fingertips. Okay, so what if we wanted to do something slightly different? What if we wanted to find um, the most recent department with product in its uh, in its name well in which case we could go ahead and add in down here product marketing just at the bottom okay and I've given this a employee ID of 9999 okay so it's got four nines in there okay now by default, our formula is currently looking from the top of the spreadsheet to the bottom of the spreadsheet. And the first result that it found with the name or with the beginning of the name was product was product management. However, we do have product management or product product marketing down here at the very bottom. OK, so how do we do that within our formula? What if we wanted to search from the bottom to the top? Well, we can come back into our formula here just before the parentheses and after the number two, we can go ahead and put a comma. This opens up the search mode for the X lookup. This means that we can choose how this formula or function will basically look for data. So here we can have by default searching from the top of the list to the bottom of the list. We can also go from the bottom of the list to the top of the list and we could also do some binary searches. Now binary searches are really useful because they allow you to sort the data in ascending or descending order and then search that criteria in that order. This is super useful if you're looking for things via a date, for example, or via an ID or an index number, in which case it allows you to kind of put those into numerical order in binary search and then basically sort them as sorting uh, in ascending order or sort them in descending order and allow you to search in that criteria. In our example here, all we need to do is actually search from the bottom of the list to the top of the list. So I'm going to go ahead and put minus one or double click Click this option right here, press return, and this time I get the employee ID of 9999. So this is another way that you can actually uh, take a, a good analytical view of your data, both in ascending or descending order, or from the top of the list to the bottom of the list, through to the bottom of the list to the top of the list. It gives you lots of different options for being able to search your data set and get the result that you're looking for. So here are some tips and tricks when it comes to XLOOKUP. There are no more column index numbers. Unlike VLOOKUP, you just don't need to count columns anymore. Just simply specify the return array. And of course, you can search from bottom up. Use the search mode and set it to minus one to search from the last entry upwards towards the very first entry. Then of course, you've got dynamic arrays. XLOOKUPs work with dynamic arrays, allowing you to return multiple values. You can combine it with other functions as well. So nest XLOOKUP within other functions like sum or average to create very powerful calculations in your Excel spreadsheets. But sometimes there are some pitfalls. So let's talk about the common pitfalls and how to avoid them. Data type mismatch. This is quite an important one. You have to ensure that your lookup value and your lookup array are the same data type. For example, they have to both be numbers or they both have to be text. You can't have a lookup value that is a number and then try to find that number in a column that maybe only contains text. Right, they have to both match. And of course, next on the list would be incorrect range references. You've got to double check that your lookup array and your return array ranges are aligned. You can't have, for example, A1 to 27 and the entire column of B. It's either the entire column of A to match up with the entire column of B, or it's A2 to A27, with B2 to B27, they must align. And of course, we can't forget about those optional arguments. Remember, you can handle the errors gracefully with the if not found argument of this function. It means that you can dress up your for, uh, your entire spreadsheets and your uh, kind of reports in a really nice and graceful ways. Unlike what you get with the VLOOKUP where you'd have to have an if error nested outside of your VLOOKUP. It was a bit of a mess, a bit of a mouthful, and it made your formulas a little bit unmanageable. With XLOOKUP, you 
don't have to worry about that. Everything is built in directly to the X formula, X lookup formula directly. And there you have it, right? X lookup is not just a new function. It's a revolution in how we handle data in Excel. It's more intuitive, versatile, and powerful than VLOOKUP ever was. So the next time that you find yourself reaching for VLOOKUP, give XLOOKUP a try instead. Your future self will thank you. Now, it's your turn. Try out XLOOKUP in your own spreadsheets and let me know how it goes. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to smash that like button for me, guys. Subscribe for more tips and tricks and ring that notification bell so you never miss another update. And guys, you're not going to want to miss that video right there. So give that a click before you go.